Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Stage Lighting, and today we are going to review Onyx. So this is going to be about a three to four hour review. Sit tight. Okay, I kid somewhat, but to be honest, if you're gonna fully review Onyx, it could take a really long time to get into a lot of the details, get into the weeds, and really discuss all the different aspects of Onyx from a software hardware perspective and how to decide if it's right for you. So here at Learn Stage Lighting and Above AVL, it's no secret that I stumbled into Onyx about nine years ago under its old name and quickly found it to be familiar in the sense that if you program professional lighting consoles from other brands, the workflow is very similar. Selecting lights, putting them into presets or palettes as other consoles may call them, hitting record and placing it on a queue. You know, pretty similar to a lot of other professional gray lighting consoles. So you found it familiar but also quickly found that there were some parts that were really unique about it and was why um, pretty early on, I was talking to a production manager friend of mine, you know, only a year or two into Onyx myself, who said, you know, once people go over there, um, they really don't come back to other consoles. And, and that's always kind of stuck with me. And I found that to be true a lot of the time. And so Onyx today is, you know, it's, it's moved forward. It's got other stuff than it used to have. And what I want to do today is kind of talk about, okay, what are some of the pros and cons of going to Onyx versus a more basic or intermediate level lighting console? Like why go to a pro lighting console like Onyx? And then kind of give you a really good overview of what to expect, what things really stick out to me and, and I think are, are awesome and make Onyx as software or hardware really a great pick. So starting off, is Onyx software or is it hardware? Well, it's kind of a complicated question. Onyx itself, you can get it and run it on a PC. There are various levels of hardware that unlock that PC. Currently, the DMX nodes from Netron give you a Nova license, then the Nova Plus license uh, with most of the USB devices, not the NX DMX, but the NX Touch, NX Play, USB keys, etc., will give you the Plus on the Nova license. It'll give you the Nova Plus. Now the plus is pretty critical because that unlocks all of your external triggering. That's MIDI, that's OSC, that's timecode primarily. That's super helpful in a lot of situations, but not every situation. Moving up from there is where you start getting into the hardware, whether you're on an NX1 console, an NX2, or an NX4 like I've got behind me. Onyx definitely is its most efficient on a console. It works well on a PC compared to some of the other ProGrade consoles and their PC versions, which kind of make you wonder what you're doing and bang your head against the wall. Onyx is definitely more functional on the PC than a lot of them, but it's definitely most functional itself on a console. So if you're gonna do a lot of programming, if you're doing a lot of events where you change your lights out and are doing programming or just programming the same lighting rig, but over and over again, having a console definitely has its advantages over a PC. You can work faster, you have more controls at your fingertips, and it tends to be that over the long haul, consoles tend to be more reliable than PCs. Now you can save some serious money running Onyx on a PC, so that's a valid consideration. I'm just saying that like, when we have customers that have installations where they run Onyx, a lot of times it's churches, right? Because that's who's trying to save money. A lot of times people run into these really obscure bugs that you really only can hit on a PC version. You know, part of the program kind of seizing up or struggling. And this is something that nobody runs into on consoles. It's kind of specific to this one PC, right? And so that's the kind of thing that may or may not get fixed by developers, just because simply put, if it only affects one or two users, then it's not gonna be a priority. That being said, Onyx is really reliable on PCs and works well for a lot of people. But let's go ahead and look at what some of my favorite features are of Onyx and why we really like it. So we're in here on the PC. And so the 2D plan view is one of those things that got added years ago that can really be helpful, right? Because you can you can bring up your lights, you can see what they're doing. It, it works really well. And in fact, if you give them a position, right, you point them somewhere, or in this case, all over the place, because I got that as a chase, you can kind of see a rough approximation of what your lights might 
be doing. So that's that's pretty cool. So 2D plane is one cool thing. You know, it works like a traditional lighting console in the sense that you have playback faders on the bottom. You bring up things that are on coder encoder wheels when you select lights. You're able to adjust them and work with those lights. A few things that in my mind make Onyx really awesome and unique compared to other consoles. And I realize other, some other consoles do have some of these features, but not all of them. It's pretty heralded out there. A lot of people know that the pixel mapper Dylos inside of Onyx is pretty darn incredible. I, I would argue that in terms of playing some video content on some lights, they're just, is no easier way than this to literally just grab a clip, stick it on a canvas, and then be playing it on your lights inside of your lighting console that is already working. In my mind, Dialos is one of those things that's a really big deal. And the fact that you can then manipulate it so much further, so it starts with just this clip playing, but then I can literally go and I could recolor this into different colors to go with what I'm doing with the lighting and just do that at the snap of a finger like that. That's really incredible stuff. Um, not only that, but some of the newer stuff that's added is audio. So right now this is attempting to pick up a BPM off of the audio coming in on my computer on um, this microphone that we're not using. And it's using that BPM and it can use that BPM to run the video. So now the speed of the video content is based on this microphone over here. If it catches a BPM, which it's it doesn't do as well with tapping, it definitely does better with real music, it can just sync to that. And I can do this on any Onyx console, not just the PC, I can do it on that NX4. I regularly plug in a measurement mic with a USB interface and I'm off to the races. You have the ability to analyze audio, to run BPM, to do all kinds of stuff like that. It's, it's really stinking cool. Similar to that is how Onyx handles well, everything. So in a lot of other consoles, if you want to take a fader, for example, and bring it up and down and have, as you bring the level up and down, have it adjust the amount that an effect is running as well as the intensity of the lights, it's actually really hard to do. In Onyx, everything is actually stored as a parameter, okay? So all of anything you do, you know, the media you chose in Dylos, the coloring in Dylos, the effects speed, the effects size, even down to how it distributes the effect across multiple fixtures, all of that's stored as like a regular parameter. So you can just put that in a queue and use an override type fader to have it change as a fader goes up and down. That's really important. That's 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 one of those things that, you know, between that and also the cue blender, which is this cool playback that has multiple cues on it as you move the fader up and down. Those are some things that you literally cannot do on other consoles. And I think it's pretty stinking awesome. It's one of those things that I use on a fairly frequent basis and it saves me time, saves me faders, helps me do my job better. Let's go over to the NX4 and talk a little bit about Onyx hardware in a full-on console and what some of the benefits are to that and why, honestly, we really like it. All right, so I'm here at the NX4 and, um, you know, there's a number of things we really like about these surfaces and having the NX4 here allows us to really show you some of the pros and cons on any console. So just as an example, Onyx, no matter what console you're on, basically has some different sections of playback that always apply the same way. And I'll flatten this down a little just so it's a little easier for you to see. Okay, first are your main playback sections. So every console has these main 10 faders at the bottom of the screen. On the NX2, they're the main 10 faders. On the NX1, they're the main 10 faders. And they're, again, the 10 at the bottom of the screen. Okay, and so these are super, super, like, center. Those are kind of the, the typical faders where people put things. Okay, now on your NX1 and NX4, my two favorite consoles of the range, you have the ability with motorized faders, you actually have faders or playbacks 11 through 20 on these buttons here. Now on the NX4, you get these sweet LCD labels that tell you what's there. On the NX1, you're not going to have those, but, you know, it is about a third of the price. 
And so the beautiful thing about this is that I can actually flip these faders either with this on-screen key or I can assign it to an F key, which I thought I had done, but I hadn't. But you could, you could do that and then everything that was on these buttons that didn't have level control now hops over to the faders and vice versa. This can be super helpful because on pretty much every other competitor's console, you kind of have 10 main faders. And if there's something in your event that you may want to press play on from time to time, you know, play and stop or whatever, but you occasionally want to adjust the intensity level, then having it, having the ability to just flip faders back and forth makes it really stinking easy. So that's kind of the first section of the console is the main playback faders. And so they're going to be right here. Next on your NX4s, and also if you happen to have an M play, um, you have your sub playback faders, okay? And so these are sub playback 12 faders and 12 buttons. Now, if you are on like an NX2 or an NX1 and you want more than the 10 main faders, you could add on more NXPs and just connect them to USB and have them on a different bank. Okay, so you can page through up and down banks on any of these consoles and you can do that independently on a sidecar, you know, an NXP as well. Okay, NX Touch, et cetera. Over to the programming side, you'll see on any Onyx console, you're gonna have this keypad. This will be on the NXK, this will be on the NX124, okay? The NX2 and 4 have this touch screen which allow you, when you have lights selected, to go ahead and change between the parameter groups. Now, as you might see, I like to store those to the function keys here. And to be 100% honest, I like using it on the hard keys more often and I use it more regularly myself. But that's my opinion. And I came from another console that historically, you know, had those buttons. That being said, you can do it on the touch screen or the button. The benefit of the touch screen is that for things like gobos, you can actually double tap on the gobo and see your Gobo images there on the touch screen. The NX1, 2, and 4 also have four encoder wheels, and the NX4 has one that's dedicated to just intensity all the time. So no matter what you're on, if you're selecting a Gobo like I am here, you can still adjust the intensity on its own nice and easy. Why choose an Onyx console over something else? Well, I would say, you know, the biggest thing with any more basic to intermediate level console or software, if you're coming from there, which I know a lot of our people are, uh, is that you may find yourself either hitting a limit in terms of programming speed, like you want to do a lot of programming or playback. You want to do, you want to have a lot of different faders with lots of different things on them. And you find yourself constantly running out of screen space if you're on a PC app or you know, the number of faders you have on another console, or just the ability to program quickly if you don't have a console that has a robust programming section like the NX consoles, you know, with a touch screen and everything kind of all together integrated in one piece, right? Those are the times when you go, okay, now it's time to upgrade to something more serious because it's gonna save me time, which therefore, you know, time is money, right? Whether you're an employee, whether you run a small company, whether you're a church volunteer, your time is valuable, right? And so anything you can do that saves time is going to help you. Other features that a pro level type console like Onyx is gonna have that you might not have in lesser, you know, more basic or intermediate level is the ability to do things like cloning. So when you patch in new fixtures, to be able to have it copy exactly over an old fixture and then be able to manipulate that, right? That's something that they have. A preset-based programming setup, or in this case, preset or palette-based, as others call it, where you can select your lights, select a color from a bank of presets, and be able to modify those later and have all your cues update from that previous, um, from that programming, okay? It's, it can save you a lot of time, save you a lot of effort to do these things later. It's something that, more basic lighting consoles aren't going to have, and so it can be a reason to jump up to something higher. So where does that take us? You know, obviously, if you've watched anything we've done online over the past years, we've been a fan of Onyx for a long time. It's a great software, and it continues to grow in leaps and bounds and add more beneficial features every year. Is it perfect, and does it have everything? No. 
but it provides a terrific value whether you're on a full console like this or just on a PC or anywhere in between. If you're more interested in Onyx, if this has piqued your interest, one of the best things to do is just go and start to watch our tutorials on them. You'll recognize my voice in almost any Onyx tutorial out there. We did the official ones, we've done lots of other ones, and take a look at it. And then right into us. Head over to our contact page over at Above AVL. If you're in the US and you need to purchase a console, then reach out. You can bounce some ideas off of us and we'll let you know our opinion on what the best fit for you would be. And remember, all of our people are not on any commission because we want to win your business for like the next few decades. So if we could do that, let us be of service to you so that we can help you and be your equipment dealer for not only lighting equipment, but audio and video for the next decades to come. If that sounds good, we'll see you there. If not, no worries, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video and uh, continue helping you finding out the right console, checking out all the great gear here on this channel. We'll see you there. Thanks.